Welcome to Gardening 101. This is episode 5 in my series. We are going to talk today about starting tomato seeds indoors. I'm going to show you how to get them started in these containers. Talk about different container size because not everybody needs this many tomato seed starts. So you can start them in something like this. I'll talk about that. Also going to talk about how you can start them in these trays and instead of using the indoor grow lights, you can use the outdoors because I know everybody doesn't have indoor grow lights or doesn't want to go through that process. So there's two ways that you can do it. We're going to talk about eggshells. I'm going to show you, um, really talk to you about how you can use them in a compost pile. And you basically want to break them down nice and finely like that. But also we can chop them up in a coffee maker, add some vinegar, create freestanding calcium, which means the plant can use that immediately. And that's really important because when you're growing tomatoes, they can get a physiological disease called blossom end rot. So I'm going to talk about that and how you can prevent it using the eggshells. Also going to cover what are good transplants to buy at Home Depot, Lowe's, or Walmart because those plants can do perfectly well. Um, but if you're spending three or four dollars, I want to make sure you're buying the plants that make good transplants. There's a whole set of plants that you shouldn't buy as seed starts there and spend, you know, three dollars for. We'll cover that. Also want to talk about the sponsor for today's show, which is me and my brother. I have a seed shop at www.therustedgarden.com, but we have a tab on there now that says MFVG slash bulk. That's my first vegetable garden. That's my second YouTube channel, the one that you're watching right now. And on that um, tab, we're going to have all kinds of discounted seed packages. And for instance, right now, there is a package you can buy 43 packs of seeds, and it's only $34. Now, there's a lot smaller ones in there, too, if you don't need 43 packs of seeds. But the whole goal of my first vegetable garden section of my seed shop is to really bring you seed packages that are inexpensive so that you can try growing stuff indoors, or you can start growing more outdoors and not pay $1.50, $2 a pack. We're also going to go to right to a close-up of everything that I'm doing on the table because some of the feedback that I got from uh, viewers is that it's hard for them to see sometimes when I'm working with the seeds. So we'll be changing this format up as I learn how to best shoot um, Gardening 101. So I appreciate your comments. And again, leave any comments you think may help this show or maybe um, a show theme that you want to see in Episode 6 when it comes up. All right, let's get to starting the tomatoes indoors. Okay, let's get started with seed starting the tomatoes and I'm also going to talk about how you can um, fertilize these. When do you fertilize them and the best way to do that. So a couple of things before we get to planting. You can certainly start your tomatoes in the six pack seed cells like this. This is what um, I do most of the time. But sometimes, you know, I'm planting, you know, 72 plants in here. You, a lot of people don't need all that. You can go to these four cells and the benefit is that the tomatoes, once these are thinned down, we're going to do that too, we're going to thin them down to one plant. Once they're thinned down, a seedling can stay in here much longer. And you may be able to keep it in here until it's ready to go into your ground. Instead of, if it's something in like this, you're going to have to pot it up into, you know, a container maybe of this size. Sometimes I use styrofoam cups. But the whole idea is I'm going to give you a bunch of different ways you can seed start and you can just match it to to your need. If you're going to maybe just want two or three tomato plants, you can just start them in a container like this. And you're going to just drop two seeds in there. You're going to thin to the, the single plant that's the strongest. And then that plant can just stay in here until it's ready to go out into your garden. When you start them in something like this, you have to go from here to the cup and then they grow. And some people don't want to do that work. But it all depends on how much space you have and how many tomatoes you want to grow. But let's just start with the standard here. Now, check out the other episodes that will show you how to prepare the seed starting mix and talk about um, the, the whole setup, really. But I want to cover two important points. Whenever you're hydrating your seed starting mix, either microwave it or use boiling water. That will stop fungus gnats. And I wanted to just say that because fungus gnats um, can stay inside the starting mixes you buy forever, really. Um, and it's really weird, but they can last. Unless you put in boiling water, you're going to end up with fungus gnats. They'll come, they'll get into your seed starts, they'll eat the roots, and you can have um, just a really miserable season after your plants are doing so well, the fungus gnat gets them. So use boiling water, check out my other videos. Now, once you fill these once, um, there's a lot of space. Press it down, I call this thumb packing. You want a nice, solid base for planting your tomato seeds, your pepper seeds, your eggplants. 
Now, a lot of people say, well, when do I start them indoors? You want to start tomatoes six to eight weeks before they would go out into your garden containers or into your garden soil. And you decide that by really looking online and figuring out when your nights are mostly in the 50s, and that's when you count backwards. So when you see that most of the nights are getting into the 50s, count backwards four weeks or six weeks, and that's when you would start these plants indoors. And again, we're gonna start them indoors. I use grow lights, there's a setup over there, but I'm gonna show you, to actually talk to you about how you can do it by using the sun outside. So figure out when the nights are 50, they're warm weather plants. If you get these out earlier when the nights aren't freezing, but they're like 35, 45 degrees, the days are only 50 degrees, these plants will kind of get purple, they'll just sit there and they're not gonna grow. You want 50 degree nights, 70 plus degree days, that's how you figure out when to start them. And you can see that I've started several seeds in there. Always start two seeds or three seeds. You don't want to be sitting around for a seed that's not going to germinate. Your tomato seeds can last years. If you put them in a Ziploc bag, store them in a cool area in the house, is perfectly fine. They're going to last three years, four years, five years. Now, for the six pack, I put two seeds in just like that, one there, one there. And that's how I start most of my tomatoes. This variety is called Garden Leader and it's supposed to be super large beefsteak type tomatoes. Every once I buy my own seeds, I sell my seeds like I was talking about. But I, when I go to the store, sometimes if I see a new variety, I pick up a pack. So in the six pack, now today is April 4th, so just to give you an idea, these were started on March 14th, so this is three weeks worth of growth. They're doing really, really well. These are actually fed with worm castings and worm casting tea from um, Vermis Terra. That's a company that I'm working with. I've actually been using their products for two years. But I'm really excited because I like to experiment and change things up and the casting, the worm casting products from Vermis Terra have been doing wonders for taking care of my plants. So these were started on 314. These were started on March uh, fourth, so these are four weeks old. These are, you know, two weeks and a couple days old. So I'm going to get into that range of six weeks to eight weeks, um, which is perfectly fine. So again, you can start your tomatoes four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks early, but I wouldn't go past eight weeks. Here they are in seed cell, and this is all I do. Don't worry about the depth. I did experiments where I planted some seeds down here. They all germinated and came up, but about a quarter an inch to a half an inch deep. Just press them down. They move, that's perfectly fine. Cover them up. I like to take the time to press in the soil to make it look nice. And this helps with figuring out when to water. So this is pre-moistened with the boiling water so I don't have any fungus gnat eggs in there. When this lightens to a light brown, that's when I know that I'm going to need to water. I'll talk about that in a second. So then go ahead, put in your tag, make sure you know you label it, set the date, and then you're good to go. And you can start these under grow lights. And if you're going to do grow lights, you want the lights on 18 hours. Drop the lights to about an inch over there. Once they germinate, leave the lights on this close, 18 hours. After five to seven days, you can raise the lights a little bit if you want, but you want really intense light. And then you can cut the lighting down to about 16 hours, 14 to 16 hours. Now, you can also start them, again, in the four cells. And all we're gonna really do with these, let me find one note. And again, see how I started um, multiple seeds? The ones here didn't germinate. So let me get a set where they all came up. So the germination rate is going to vary sometimes on the varieties. Tomatoes will come up if it's about 70 degrees, 75 degrees indoors under lights. They'll sprout in anywhere from four to seven days. So just go through, take out the weakest ones, and just cut them. If you pull them out, you're also going to be pulling out the root systems, but they're going to damage the roots from the plant that you're keeping in there. So I just like to cut them. And you're going to thin it down to the strongest one. All right, so that's all you do. So these are thinned down, and they're thinned down after about three to four weeks worth of growth. The, the key is, is you want them to look something like this. This is 
Right here is the first leaf that comes out. That's not the true leaf. And then you get the true leaves, which it look like tomatoes, tomato leaves. And then you get the next set of leaves and it keeps, you know, going up. So when you get to the point, these have already been fed. Let's see if I can find a better example. Um, these were started two weeks ago. Maybe, let's go with this one. When your tomatoes get to this point, here we go, where the true leaves are starting to come out right here. So again, these are the leaves that first break out and then the true leaves form. When they come out, that's when you want to feed them. Now I feed them, right now I'm feeding them worm casting tea and that's two ounces per gallon. Fill up the tray. I always bottom water, never pour stuff on top of your plants. Always bottom water and bottom watering means you fill this tray right here to about this depth. And whatever the tomato plants don't drink up, or actually whatever the soil doesn't absorb, in 20 to 30 minutes just pour out. But you get pretty good at judging what needs to be done. You water when the tops dry out. The tops will dry out first. Moisture will stay here. But when it comes to the feeding, about once every 7 to 14 days, when they get to looking like this, I water them with the fertilizer. In my case, I'm using the worm casting tea. You could use any water-soluble fertilizer, organic, chemical, most of the water-soluble organic fertilizers are a nice low N, P, and K. Try and stay at a 5, 5, 5 or less. You don't want to overfeed and love your tomatoes. Too much fertilizer will kill and harm your plants. It will also look like a nutritional issue that they're lacking. What do I mean by that? Sometimes you put in too much fertilizer, they start to turn yellow. You think they need more fertilizer, you put in more, you kill your plant. Very little fertilizer. When you go to the chemical fertilizers like miracle Grow, they're perfectly fine. But they're like a 24 nitrogen, I don't know, 16 phosphorus, 18, whatever. That, those numbers are too high. Cut it down to a quarter strength. Bring the numbers down of N, P, and K below a 555. So again, water them with a low strength liquid fertilizer um, every 7 to 14 days after this point. And then instead of doing the watering, just add in the fertilizer to your water and water as you need to. That will take care of your plants. And just for instance, let me just show you. Um, let's see if you can see it on here. It's hard to see, but the N, P, and K is 0 .01, 0 .01, and I think 0 .04 at 2 ounces per gallon. So it's a really low amount a fertilizer these guys need because this is just a little bit of soil. This is not like a container outdoors and it's certainly not like, like your ground. I can't stress enough, don't overfeed and love your plants. All right, so if you set up a tray like this, you're going to have 72 plants. If you go ahead and you grow them like this, you're going to have 4 times 12, you're going to have 48 plants. They all go into these trays. And if you go ahead and use containers like this, you may end up with anywhere from 8 to 12 plants. Perfectly fine. Seed start them all the same exact way. Now, how can you start these like this without grow lights? Well, you use the outdoors. And how do you do that? The most important thing, let me put these away as we talk. The most important thing is that you don't let your seed starts ever freeze. So never put them out during the day if the temperatures aren't about 40 degrees. So you're going to go ahead, pretend, um, well let's just, let me put this down here so I don't spill it as I get distracted. So let's pretend we just started this flat. Everything looks just like this. Whenever it's 40 degrees or warmer and there's not a heavy rain coming, if rain's coming you need to get a storage box bottom, cover these up, a clear one that'll let the sun in but it'll keep the water up. You don't want these to get rain on. So you go ahead, you put them outside during the day. When it's 40 degrees you bring them in at night. They're going to germinate a little bit more slowly because the temperatures are colder. But when you bring them in at night it keeps the roots warm, it gets back up to 70 degrees the tomatoes are going to germinate. Go ahead and take them back outside the next day. And again, protect them um, from rain by putting a storage container or some sort of clear lid across the top. Just make sure they're out during the day when it's 40 plus degrees and bring them in at night. It's also going to help with acclimation because these plants are being grown from the sun outdoors. They're going to be used to the sun, they're going to be used to the weather, and you're not going to have to acclimate them later. And what that means is when these are grown indoors under grow lights, they don't have any resistance 
to the sun, they're not used to the wind, and the sun will actually damage and burn them. So that's the best way to really get your tomatoes seeds started indoors. Again, they can go under the grow lights like I mentioned. Check out my other episodes in Garden 101. I'll talk more about grow lights. Or you can just move these in and out. And 72 plants right here. If you use these, it's 48 plants. So you can grow 48 transplants right in these containers by moving them in and out. And 48 plants, if you go to the store to buy them, you're going to be paying anywhere from two to four dollars a plant. So you can just think about all the money you're saving by starting your own seed. All right, so let's get to the eggshells. Eggshells are a great form of calcium for your plants. Calcium is the second level macronutrient. You have N, P, and K, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, first level macronutrient, and then you have calcium, sulfur, and magnesium as the second level. So you can create a little bit of a mixture. We've got a coffee grinder here. I'm going to show you how to do that. So when you crack open an egg, save it. You want to heat them in an oven for about 20 to 30 minutes at 200 degrees. Dry it out, kill out any bacteria or anything like that. Do not throw your eggs like this into a compost pile. They will take forever to break down. You want to crush them up, you know, into coarse, somewhat fine pieces, and it'll look just like that. So just crush them all up. When you crush up eggshells, you increase the surface area, crush them up as, you know, as much as you want. By increasing the surface area, the soil biology, the bacteria and stuff, gets in and around the cracks of the shells. You have more surface area, they break down more quickly. A plant can't use eggshell calcium like this. It's not a free form of calcium. This is a slow release form of calcium, so if you're throwing this in your compost pile or throwing it into your garden, over the year, the soil biology is going to break it down, it's going to free up the calcium, and your plant will be able to absorb it and pull it into the root system. So for this to work, you need freestanding calcium. And that's basically called water-soluble calcium. Let me get this out of the way. Now you can speed this up, so this could go right onto your compost pile, this could go into your garden bed. If you're going to use it in a container, I recommend doing this. Take the crushed eggshell. I got some in here already from a previous video on my other channel. And you're going to grind it up. You want to pulverize it up so it's nice and fine. You can see sort of the smoke coming off. That's all eggshell. Now, the finer it is, the more quickly the soil biology is going to break it down. This is how I like to set it up. Just keep it dry and I put in about two tablespoons, three tablespoons into your containers. Two or three tablespoons into five gallons. You can adjust however you want. And that's um, when you're setting up the container, two or three tablespoons. This will break down over the season. It will release the calcium. But you can also speed it up. You know, put this into a gallon of water. Take one tablespoon of the eggshell. Use plain old white vinegar, it's inexpensive. You're going to create a chemical reaction. Reaction. The acidity of the vinegar will react with the calcium carbonate. I don't know if you can hear it, but you can see it. It starts to bubble. So the vinegar and the calcium react. What the vinegar does is it breaks the calcium off of the calcium carbonate, to keep it simple. And that calcium is free. That calcium can mix with water. You would mix one or two tablespoons into a gallon of water at the time that you want to use it. Shake it up. Pour the whole gallon, one gallon per five gallon container. That's going to send in free calcium into the uh, root system of your plant and it will be able to use it right away. So, let me just recap. So it's still dissolving. Let this sit for about 30 minutes before you would go and put it you know, into a gallon of water. So keep everything dry, just like this. Two or three tablespoons into a five gallon container when you set up your container. And then you can do this about once a month. You don't have to worry about it when the plant is small, but when the plant gets to about this size and the fruit starts to form, go ahead and make this up. One tablespoon into here of the eggshell, one tablespoon of vinegar, let it sit 30 minutes, pour it right into some water, 
pour that one gallon of water right into your five gallon plant. That's how you can pre prevent blossom end drop. Now, the acidity from the vinegar is neutralized by the eggshell at this ratio, so you're not going to harm your plant with, you know, the acid vinegar. You're not going to change the pH, but that's how you would do it. All right, let me clean this up, and then we'll sit down. I'm going to show you the actually the seed packs that I have on sale at my first vegetable garden tab on my YouTube channel, and I will put a link right to that in the description. And we'll talk about what to buy and what not to buy at the uh, stores like Home Depot and stuff in the way of transplants. All right, so if you have questions about um, anything I talked about today, leave a comment. I get back to 98% of all the comments, so if you leave something, I'm going to probably read it, and I will respond um, usually within 24 hours. Before we get to what to buy and not to buy at stores, here is the seed package that is available. It's 43 packs of seeds, and you can just see an idea. Pictures on there. On the back are instructions on how to plant. Um, and again, 43 packs for $34, save a lot of money. You can get eight packs of tomatoes for about $8, all kinds of different packages. Here's a mescaline mix. This is a one ounce, you'll get two bags for I think $5.95. That's a lot of lettuce. You can keep that for a year or two too. So please check it out. Check out the description. I'll put a direct link to where you can find the products. So when you go to Home Depot, when you go to Lowe's, when you go to Walmart, tip number one. It's so important that you buy the transplants within a week to 10 days at the most from when they come off the truck. I know that sounds funny, but once a tomato plant is sitting there past 7, 10 days, they run out of food, they're not watered regularly, you're buying damaged plants. So you really want to talk to your local uh, transplant seller, Home Depot, Lowe's, Walmart, wherever you're buying it and try and figure out when the new shipments come in because they'll sit there sometimes two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. You'll see tomatoes that are yellowing, turning purple. That's all because they don't have enough nutrition. So one tip one, buy the transplants within a week or so of them coming off the truck. That's when they're healthy. The plants that you don't want to buy, don't buy lettuce. You can start lettuce so easily in cells like this. This is about the size that you want it to be to transplant it. Lettuce will bolt. If it's sitting and growing and you're buying these big things of lettuce, you put it in the ground, it's not going to really do much. Um, it's too expensive. Don't do it that way. You can direct sow tomato seed, I'm sorry, lettuce seeds real easily. Just as soon as the freezing temperatures are gone, you can put your lettuce seeds out. You can start them like this. Kale's a leafy green. That's okay to buy as a transplant because this will grow for the entire year here in Maryland Zone 7. Um, so you got the leafy greens of kales, um, cabbages, they're all fine. You can buy Brussels sprouts, broccoli, those are all good transplants. But again, you want to get those early. Don't buy lettuce, that's just a waste of money. Don't buy peas. I show you in my videos how you can seed start peas, but you can just put them right into the ground. Buying peas is, again, a waste of money. So no lettuce, no peas. Um, I wouldn't buy anything like Cucumbers or melons, they need to really, once they break the surface uh, and germinate, within two to three weeks, they need to get out into the ground or you could end up with little bonsai miniature plants. So don't buy cucumbers. I wouldn't buy any melons. Um, you just don't need to. They will start real easily out in the ground. Things that I would buy. I would buy tomatoes. I would buy peppers. I would buy eggplant. They make great transplants from stores. And again, the plants that tend to need six or eight weeks worth of growth are the plants you want to buy as transplants. Um, your herbs like thyme, oregano, um, I would buy. That's perfectly fine. Lavender, rosemary, great to buy. Do not buy basil. Buying basil is just a waste of money. You can get a pack of seeds. It has like 500 seeds in there. I actually sell them in my seed shop. They're inexpensive. Um, you can start them in cells just like this. And again, you could do lettuce, you could do um, basil in here, for instance, and you could just take this in and out of the door outside, like I was explaining to you, and you'll have plenty of seed starts that way, or just direct sow them. When you buy the basil, it's usually big, it's getting to the point it wants to flower, and you're just not going to get a healthy plant. Direct sow your basil or seed started indoors. Uh, let me just think real quick if there's anything else that I wouldn't buy. Um, and if you have a choice between onion bulbs, which I explained in the video, or the onion bunches, which are the long green onions that are like, you know, baby onions, buy the bunches. They do much better. So when you transplant them into your garden, um, they're going to have a greater chance to bulb and form a great 
uh, size onion. When you buy the miniature onions, the little baby onions, they think they've already grown a year, so when you put them in the ground, sometimes they rush to flower. So I wouldn't buy the bulbs. Um, and finally, real quick, I did, um, I think episode three was about the uh, fruit and vegetable um, stock that you can buy there. I went into Home Depot today to buy some stuff. And all those grapes, the um, blueberries, the uh, goji berries that were all put out about eight weeks ago, they had all this great green growing that was dying off and stuff like that. My point is, when you see those boxed fruits, you want to buy them again within a week or two of them getting out there. And they usually go out um, when I did that video, so it may be like four, not four, maybe six or eight weeks ago. So don't buy the fruit boxes right now. Those plants have sprouted, they're drying out, they're weak, they're just not really worth buying. So I hope you enjoyed the video. hope it gave you some ideas of how you can seed start your tomatoes indoors under grow lights. Also, you know, take them outside if you don't want to um, set up a grow light system. And ways that you can use calcium, um, you can use eggshells for calcium in your garden. Episode 6 will be out in about three weeks. Leave comments on what you would like to see. And please check out my first vegetable garden tab at my um, seed shop. It's really, really nicely discounted. And let me know what you might like to see sold. I'll be able to uh, track it down and hopefully get it up there and sell it at a price that's really reasonable. Thanks for watching.